Hello and good evening, everybody. Um, so, okay. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, so, so today we are going to talk about uh, workload migration for uh, Kubernetes clusters. Um, so, we'll just uh, begin by giving a brief introduction about uh, us. So, let's start with uh, Ajesh. Uh, he's Ajish is one of the product managers uh, working at MyData, the company behind uh, OpenEBS. And um, Ajish handles uh, uh, Litmus product as, um, itself, which is a chaos engineering tool for Kubernetes. And myself, I'm Vishnu Attur, and um, I'm one of the directors of engineering at MyData. And uh, I handle the product called uh, OpenEBS Director. and um, we have uh, Vishnu Itta here, so he's um, also director of engineering and uh, he's one of the maintainers of OpenEBS. So before we actually start with the presentation, uh, just would like um, all of you to join us on a free workshop so tomorrow, which is at uh, uh, Hilton. And uh, so in this workshop, you'll get to know about uh, um, all you need to know about OpenEBS, how to get started with the same. And this is we are doing in collaboration with uh, D2IQ. So um, there's also a ha happy hour there. So you, you can all register for free um, with our website. You can just go to www.mydata.io and uh, you can register for free here. So just before uh, I will start with the actual presentation. So uh, this presentation was Ideally, supposed to have been given by these two gentlemen, Akash and Shovan. So, uh, so they are the developer advocates, and one of them is a maintainer of WeWorks Scope as well. So, due to some um, visa related issues at the last moment, they were not able to make it. So, we just want to um, hand over the credits to them as well. Okay, so let's begin this. Um, why do we need workload migration for Kubernetes, right? So let's start with that. So there could be like many reasons why um, you need a, uh, to migrate your workload. So as of today, and enterprises are actually spread across the clouds. So I could be running workloads uh, on GKE, which is the Google Cloud. I could be having them on uh, AWS. I could be having some on my enterprise uh, or on on premise as well by using Rancher and OpenShift. So it's based on various factors, like I will be distributing my workloads across the cloud, it's cross cloud, and uh, there could be several reasons why I would like to move my my workload from one cl cloud to another cloud, or it could be from on-premise to the cloud, or vice versa. So one of the major reasons, like why do we need, is to, it could be based on the cost factor, like, uh, I could be getting a better deal on AWS today, but it may not be the case going forward. So after one year, my contract with AWS might expire and I need to migrate all the workloads to DigitalOcean, which could be giving me a much better deal with respect to the money factor itself, right? So there could be several such reasons why I would like to migrate workloads. Likewise, um, since we are in the storage industry, uh, data production and uh, um, Data backups is one of the core features any storage solution needs to have. So we are the maintainers and the makers of OpenEBS. So definitely we have to uh, have a disaster recovery solution in place so that we can actually uh, migrate the data. And uh, another reason could be like application upgrade. So if I want to upgrade, let's say like I'm working with one version of Elasticsearch or Cassandra, which is a stateful <coughs> set. And so tomorrow Elasticsearch releases one, one new security fix, vulnerability fix. And uh, if I want to uh, apply this fix, right, so there could be like a small downtime um, in the version uh, while applying the, or while upgrading the elastic search. So it can happen like uh, Kubernetes itself does the rolling updates for ensuring that there is no downtime with respect to the application consistency. But there can always be an issue with the data if the upgrade did not go through well, you could always uh, uh, have a situation where the data is inconsistent on the disk. So it is mandatory for us to have backups of the data before starting with the upgrade so that in case of any issue or any failure, when the rollback happens, I will have to go back to the previous consistent state on the disk. 
so application updates are very cr- critical in today's world uh, likewise uh, uh, we can't discount uh, kubernetes upgrades also because kubernetes is a very very fast evolving product <coughs> all of us here are uh, all of us are here because of k- k- kubernetes right so it's like they keep releasing uh, one one patch or one one release every one month or every two months so um whenever we are upgrading kubernetes we need to ensure that if it's a node upgrade they could be always having a downtime on on the on the pods that are running on those on those specific nodes so you need to have backups for all these cases so kubernetes upgrade is one of the major reasons why we need to have the support for migration okay so a few concepts just before we get into the um, actual demo demo and the slides so data backup data recovery i think all of us are actually aware of so data backup is nothing but uh, ability to take uh, snapshots of the data um, which are consistent with respect to the state on the disk and uh, we want to ensure that um, we always keep a backup or we send the data from the primary storage to a a secondary storage so a secondary storage could be an object store for example s3 or gcp buckets or it could be uh, another storage solution altogether and data recovery is nothing but um, it's the uh, process of actually recovering the lost or c- corrupted data in case of a disaster or in case of any uh, faults so how well we are able to recover the data from the secondary storage and uh, data protection is the overall term which is uh, used for the same so this involves both the backup as well as the recovery operations uh, how many of you have actually heard about uh, the terms called rpo and rto yes so may i ask you like what do you mean by rpo and rto yeah something does fail the amount of time you want to be able to bring it back up in or you know up until or not for shorter right and rpo is basically from the last um if you have a snapshot of that you know from that the is the the measure of the drift between the copy and the original yes that's great so yeah you are right on track so rpo is the uh, maximum amount of data that can be considered or it's a maximum p- permissible amount of data that can be lost um, on a on a recovery so let's say that i have a backup scheduled uh, which is which is running at uh, uh, every hour and uh, there has been a downtime let's say like at 5 minutes past that hour so i'll be technically losing 5 uh, minutes worth of data right so that's what is the rpo so it is actually the amount of data me- measured in time and uh, RTO is again uh, as uh, he said uh, RTO is the recovery time objective which means how much time i actually take to recover the data and bring the application consistency back online so that the, the the users can actually start using the the application or the workload so these are some of the concepts which are uh, uh, kind of uh, useful for understanding a migration or a backup solution so okay what are the challenges that exist in today's world because we are all aware that uh, storage solutions like traditionally do have um, backup solutions in place like we have and we also have like third party solutions for example commvault or veritas right but when it comes to the stateful workloads on kubernetes do we have these solutions in place so maybe like they are in progress and they are being developed today but as of as of today there is uh, no native migration support in K- kubernetes so we have to have uh, we have to use uh, tools like heptio velero and casten for that to happen and uh, there are also several complexities involved uh, in the uh, to 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 do the migration from one cluster to another <coughs> cluster because when we are talking about a cross cluster right it could be um running across the clouds they could be running in different vendors or um they could be running on premise so there are definitely a lot of technical challenges in having a very seamless uh, workflow and the and the seamless experience for a f- for the migration and uh, actually the bigger c- cloud vendors right so they 
kind of uh, have the inbuilt solutions which allows them to migrate a workload from from within GKE or within AWS, right? But so that kind of uh, enters into like a lock-in process where um, like you get used to that particular cloud provider and your solution will be al almost limited to that particular cloud. So. And again, the stateful workload. So there is always a kind of a, a challenge in maintaining stateful workloads on Kubernetes itself. That's where OpenABS uh, kind of comes up with a solution to to mainly manage the stateful workloads on Kubernetes. So we can definitely or easily migrate an application along with its dependencies, which are in the namespace. But when it comes to the data or the stateful data, which, which that application is using, so we need to ensure that even the data is migrated along with the application manifests. And uh, finally, it comes to the application consistency. Uh, since we are talking about uh, storage data migration here, so we also need to ensure that the, the backup which is existing on the secondary storage is really application consistent. So when I say application consistent, I should be able to restore from the backup and I should be able to spin up the application with minimal downtime as much as possible, right? So that's what is application consistency. Um, okay, so how do we do this, right? So our solution um, is actually based on OpenEBS and Velero. We are, uh, why we are using OpenEBS? We are using OpenEBS because it is a container attached storage and uh, it also provides us a very good way of, of taking just-in-time snapshots. And these snapshots are actually consistent with respect to uh, the application also. And uh, Velero, because Velero gives us a very uh, good workflow for actually transferring the, um, the data along with all the dependent manifests. Like for example, you could have an application running in a namespace with a service account, so, and a config map. So Velero does help us to take all the related uh, manifest along with the application YAMLs. So we use a conjunction of both uh, OpenEBS and Velero to um, do this migration. So we have this, uh, this service known as data migration or DMAS, and um, this is a part of our OpenEBS director solution. Uh, so now I will would like to hand over to Ajesh uh, for the demo on the scene. Thank you. Thanks, Vishnu. Uh Yeah. Okay, so before we start with the demo, I uh, just wanted to walk through the setup. So currently, uh, in this demo, we are using a packet cluster and a GK cluster. A packet is the source and the GK as the destination. So both are connected to Director Online, which is a management interface for OpenEBS and management and visualization platform. So we have a MinIO application running on packet cluster which will be migrated to uh, Google Cloud. So uh, this solution is on based on the incremental backups at a uh, few minutes interval. We can give it any interval of times, like what Vishnu was saying, like RPO, what do you want to have? And once we migrate, uh, the data will be available on GK. That's what I'm going to demo. Okay, I'm using a recorded demo so that it will be easier. Okay, so how to access uh, OpenEBS director? So you can just log into MyData.io, which is integrated uh, platform. It's like we can log in using multiple authentication methods. You have uh, then I'm us currently using the local authentication. Uh, otherwise, you can use any uh, OAuth product. Uh, auth credentials like github or google okay uh, let me log in into the account portal so from here i will be able to launch uh, director online so here we have other details as well so we can look into uh, you can this is a free site uh, it's like you can connect here and manage multiple clusters director is a multi uh, cloud management platform it uh, does not uh, it manages multiple clusters like in instance this has like a, i have three uh, kubernetes clusters connected here uh, google cloud packet and red hat openshift it's a, which is a on premise uh, server 
so let me go to google cloud just to show that there is no other application currently running so i'll go back to the packet cluster which is my source cluster so let's pick up one of the application say minio i want to migrate this application to packet or uh, sorry to google so i'll go to dmas which is data migration as a service and before uh migrating i just wanted to show what are the contents in minio so let me access minio service just uh logging in here and currently i have few files here let me upload <coughs> one of the file just to show that integrity at after downloading uh it's like after restoring just wanted to make sure that this contents are there so i uploaded one file okay let me go back to direct online and create a new schedule okay, let me pause here uh, currently we support uh, data backup to multiple services like uh, cloud providers like aws gcp or minio minio can be running on your on premise so we can log in uh, just here i am providing this secrets so that the uh, data will be uh, my backed up in aws so and i will create with a 5 minute schedule okay so once the schedule is created so this backup happens like every 5 minutes uh, intervals that's what, that's what i have configured here and uh, if you go inside the schedule uh, just let me skip little bit sorry one second okay uh okay and i'm just trying to access my gk console so that there's nothing there and okay here i am trying to uh, upload few more files so that i think i skip that part sorry okay so once the schedule is created uh, i can see that uh, okay sorry i'll upload a couple of couple of more files here so that uh, these things also get backed up so we just wanted to show that it's like happening incremental backups so once this is done uh, i'll go here and see that uh sorry let's this move here that's fine okay so i have currently let me pause here so i have three um backups uh, done to aws so it's like at interval of like uh Eight minutes ago, and the last backup is at two minutes. So I'll try to restore the last backup, which will have the latest set of files which was backed up. So let me, as part of the restore, I am trying to pick up a uh, Google cluster. and i'll do a, a restore on the things uh, okay so once i do the restore uh, what it happens like so what happens in the background that we can visualize in the screen so first uh, it will try to restore the pvcs uh, and the mm -hmm. volumes it whatever it has been taken so in this case i had three snapshots which was been taken so it uh, picks up the first uh, snapshot and then 
the incremental snapshots will be uh, restored at the destination cluster. So once the three backups have been uh, restored here, then the activation process will happen. So as part of the activation process, like uh, it tries to do uh, multiple things. One of the things will be like uh, restore the application as it is. Uh, then whatever association with the PVC that gets mounted, then the service also gets restored. So once the restoration is complete, it's uh, we can see that it will be the activation process, whatever I had just explained. So the service and the application spec will be uh, restored at the destination cluster. So once it is done, we'll just try to access the destination cluster. Maybe like let me forward a little bit. So it will show something like this and you can find out the details of what it has happened and uh, let's try to view the application so when you view the application it goes to the MinIO deployment and which is on the Google Cloud that's what you can see here and it has switched to the cluster Google Cloud and we'll try to access the data from the uh, actual cl uh, cluster we can see that uh, the application is in a healthy state let me access the Google, uh, the destination cluster where we have migrated, uh, where we have restored the data, and here it's restored. Okay, just to make sure that the integrity of the file, I'll try to download uh, the file. Okay, I'm just opening the file. Okay. You guys know this gentleman, <laughs> okay? So yeah, that's it about the DMAS. Uh, okay. Uh, that's it about the demo. Uh, let me s go a little bit further. What next? So just wanted to hand it over to Victor. Hey guys, uh, sorry for making you uh, wait till uh, Sunday evening, right? Okay. But the so what next is about like we saw the demo where your data migrates to other side, right? So, but the point is, um, yeah, you might have already using a lot of local PVs and you might be using uh, Kubernetes volumes, right? So, what are any, do you have any applications that you are using currently to migrate your data? <coughs> Something you guys, maybe you guys heard about AppStash. KubeDB, Valero, right? These are the kind of frameworks and um, database applications where you can migrate it. I mean, uh, once you start using your data, stateful applications, these are some things. But the, we try to follow the Valero plugin, but we have some issues with the application consistent snapshots, right? So it doesn't allow us right now to do those things. So what we're coming up with something called as KubeMoo. Uh, this allows you to make your storage along with the application, goes to different cluster, and we are coming with the specs. Uh, it's still in design phase. So this should help. Um, it's again an open source project, right? So yeah, stay tuned and we'll have uh, more of like, it's a Kubernetes based and yeah, it provides you within the cluster and across the clusters kind of data migration of local PV. I think for sure you'll be hitting, once you start using stateful applications, you need a storage saved somewhere. You want, don't want to lose your data. That will be the main reason, right? Yeah. So any questions? This is the last slide. I don't want you guys to stay for a long time. <laughs> sure, sir. Um, when you might have, when you do the backup of the application or the backup of the source KV and copy it over, right? How are you ensuring the consistency? Exactly. Yeah. So Volero is the plugin which we used here. Volero provides you using pre-hooks, but actually, um, it's a bit difficult. I mean, that is where we moved with Cube actually. It have few problems where we can't do make really application consistent right now. That is where Cube Move is coming. We are coming to the application plugin we can add wherever it can run. So this is our, uh, the next uh, where we want to, yeah. So whatever we try to do, and basically it's open source project, but it's a closed roadmaps. So it's a bit difficult to go over there. But it's beautiful framework, it's a build right now, yeah. 
Oh. He says that Valero has a closed roadmap. No, I meant like um, we have the uh, regular things happening, but yeah, when we wanted to, I mean, application consistent snapshot, we have some issues. So we thought like some standards will pick and together we'll work with the Valero team and we approaching with few other uh, vendors. So, right, Robin also I went through. Yeah, so AppStash is one, uh, KubeDB, you might have seen, right, yeah. It's it's open source, it's for sure, like, uh, we have, it have regular uh, meetings where people attend and then, yeah. Um, Another developer on Valero. Okay. Right. The, the roadmap is very open. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah I know. Yeah. I mean, application consistent, what I meant roadmap is like we have, even every project have their own uh, open um, tracking ones. My point is like application consistent snapshots still uh, we are feeling uh, something need to be filled with APIs as a plugin model for application itself. Right now, Volero have its own plugin model which runs with Volero uh, server, right? Volero, we have a plug, uh, running as a server model and then the plugins will be running over it and where volumes will be taken as a snapshots and group snapshots are seem still, I think, evolving. I, I meant like we have a lot of things for Volero already in the pipeline, right? So uh, that's what I just meant. It's not like, yeah. It's prioritization is about, yeah. yeah. You can help us. Sorry? You can help us prioritize. Yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> sure, yeah, we'll, we'll do collab collaborate and then yeah, should be able to do it, yes. And you have, right? I, I, there's a number of PRs, right? From the yeah, from my data, we have a couple of issues yeah. and PRs. Mm -hmm. um, we always follow your releases. It's a good framework, yeah, nice framework. Anything more, guys? Thanks.